Tayada Zatala Bagani. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. There is no one like you, Jesus. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We worship you, Lord, above everything, Lord. Masa kada raba zata la bagani, weka tasa tala bagani. You that is seated on the throne of grace. We worship your name, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. You are great in battle, O oh God. Masa Rakato sekela bagande re bazita ya nam. Tuna kuabudo bana tuna. Wastahili Wastahili sifa za mnyoyo yetu Wastahili kupewa sifa na utukufu Yesu Wewe uliyeketi juu sana Tunakuabudu Yesu 
wastahili utukufu na sifa zote wastahili Yesu mamlaka yote ni yako wastahili mfame wastahili bwana wa mabwana hakuna mungu kama wewe Yesu tunakuabudu wastahili Yesu haleluya 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 Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. This even in Jesus, we agree with your word that you're worthy. You're worthy of our worship. You're worthy, Jesus. In the same mood of prayer, I invite us to read the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. And the, the word says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from darkness. And also we read John 1 verse 5. The book of John 1. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. I want us as we go into prayer, as we pray for our families, as we pray for our the church and even the nation we invite this light the bible records that the light is god and when we invite this light in our families the darkness in our family will disappear we invite this light to our church our bills and whatever we need god will it's going to settle it even to our nation our father and our god We are delighted, Lord, for what you've given us this evening in Jesus. The Lord, you are the light. And when, Lord, you created this light, my Father, you say that it is good before your sight. And, Lord, you separated, Lord, day from night, my Father, by this light. And, Lord, we are calling, my Father, on your name, on behalf of our families, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we've loved darkness. And we've ran away from the light, my Father. But Lord, tonight, we're coming back, my Father, to this light. For Lord, we understand. If Lord, if we are, not, we are on the light, right, oh God. If you're on the light, my Father, we shall do the right things, oh God. And Lord, our families will be settled, my Father. We'll, not, we'll know how to love one another, Jehovah. We'll know how, my Father, to correlate and to exist, my Father, with our siblings, my Father. Lord, we invite in this light for we know Jesus. When you appear, my Father, our families will not be the same again. When you appear, Jesus, siblings will agree with one another, my Father. Spouses, Lord, will love one another, oh God. Lord, we call it forth for this light that will bring, my Father, the first love, oh God, between the two, my Father. Light, light, we call on you, my Father, on our families, oh God. The Lord, people will know how to love one another. The Lord, we shall respect our neighbors, oh God. The Lord, we shall respect our neighbors, Lord. Lord, at our workplace, oh God, we shall know the Lord, we are a family. Light of the world, we invite you in our families. We invite you in our churches in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you say that we are the light of the world. And tonight, my Father, we pray that you may restore the power of this light to our churches, my Father. The Lord, we shall be this light. The Lord, we shall shine bright. The Lord, we shall shine bright in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, our light. We're coming back to this place. Lord, we know we've loved darkness and we've deviated from this light. But Lord, tonight, tonight, Lord, we're coming back. We're choosing light of our darkness. We're choosing this light of our darkness, oh God, for we know you are the light. We know you are light, my Father. And Lord, we welcome you. 
We welcome you to our churches, oh God. We welcome you to our church, my Father. We welcome you to our hearts, my Father. We welcome you to our minds in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh light, you say the Lord, the light shines in darkness and darkness comprehends it not. Oh Lord, may you cause us as Christians to shine. May you cause us as Christians to shine, my Father. Because we are doing the right thing. Because we are doing, my Father, the right thing. Because now we will soak ourselves into your word. We will choose prayers, oh God. We will choose to have a relationship with you. Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. For, for our nation, Kenya, my father. Lord, even the midst of all the road accidents, my father. Lord, we invite you. We invite you lighter on our roads in the name of Jesus Christ. As we declare, we will agree with you, Jesus. The Lord is saying no more accidents. No more accidents in the name of Jesus Christ. Our roads will be saved. Our roads will be the best roads to walk and drive on in the name of Jesus Christ. Serving Lord, we love you. We love you, Jesus. And Lord, we know as we ask you're hearing my Father. We know, Lord, that we call on your name. You say you will save us, you will heal us, our Father. May you heal our families, oh God. May you heal our churches, oh God. May you heal our nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Heal our nation in the name of Jesus. Heal our nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Osana, Osana in the highest. Lord, we are delighted knowing that tonight you've done a new thing. The Lord, you've done a new thing to our families. The Lord, you've done a new thing to our families. The Lord, our families are not the same again. Because Lord, we are going to know the light. Because Lord, you are the light on our families, my Father. No more darkness. No more darkness in the name of Jesus. No more darkness in our church, oh God. We shall be lovers of light. We shall be lovers of light in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, Lord, we bless your name. We worship you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for moving in our midst. Thank you, Jesus, for visiting us. Thank you, Lord, for answering our cry tonight, oh God. The Lord, you say that joy has come because this is our morning as a church, as a family. Lord, as a, as a nation, my Father, receive all the praise. Receive all the glory. Seated in the highest place. We enthrone you, Jesus. We enthrone you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Master. We love you, Sovereign Lord. We love you, our dear God. Our Father, our Provider, our Source. We choose to remain with you. We choose to remain with you, Jesus. We choose to remain under your feet. For Lord, we know under your feet we are stronger. We know under your feet, my Father, we are more than, a, than conquerors in the name of Jesus. We know under your feet, Jehovah, all that we require is provided for. And it is even in Jesus, even as we prepare, my Father, to sit and hear from thee, Jesus, we open our minds. We open our hearts, oh God, and we silence every other voice. The Lord, we may hear you and you alone. We are here, Lord, to have a moment with you. We are here, Lord, for an encounter with you, Jesus. We are expectant, oh God, and Lord, we know that our expectations will not be cut short. We know, my Father, our expectations, my Father, when you delight in them, you grant, oh God, and Lord, tonight, you know, you've delighted in our expectations. Receive all the glory. Receive all the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
we prayed. Amen. The church said, Amen. We can celebrate Jesus because he is in this place. Yes, we can do better than that. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Again, I invite you to our evening service. This is Holy Spirit Dwelling Place Ministry and our prophet Eric and Pastor Ann Odoyo. To our online viewers, you made the best choice. And because you chose to gather with us, your life will not be the same. Because God is doing something new in this place. At this moment, I want to invite us to give. And as, as we give, allow us to read a verse. It's a memory verse. It's in John 3, 16, but part 1. That says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So as we are giving, God showed us the way that we give because we love. And as we prepare to give, give with this understanding that you're giving to someone you love because you all love God. Allow me to pray as I invite, praise and worship him. And we have various methods of giving. You can give by our pay bill. Our online viewers, the same is projected. You can see, you can scan the QR code. And also you can pay via our pay bill number 4075339. And the Lord will bless you. Let's believe and pray. Dear Master, we are delighted that tonight you are delighted in us giving a token of what you've given unto us, my Father. We know, Lord, we can't outdo you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we are coming before thee, Lord, with what you've given us just to say thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, oh God, and what and for your promises that, Lord, are amen and hallelujah. Receive all the glory. Receive all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Welcome, praise, and worship. Zazi hati vizazi vya kufahamu wewe Ulie mungu wakali na ulie mungu wa leo Kazi za koza onyesha uku wako wewe Umetukuka, umeinuliwa, ewe buwana Vizazi, vizazi, hati vizazi Vya kufahamu, wewe Ulie, ulie mungu wakale Na ulie, na ulie mungu waleo Kazi za ko Ukuwa kowewe Umetukuka, umeinuliwa Ewe buwana Vizazi Vizazi, hali vizazi Vya kufahamu Wewe ni mungu wakale Na wewe ni mungu wale Ziza ko zaonyesha ukuwa ko wewe umetukuka umeinuliwa ewe bona.
Jesus as we appreciate praise and worship team for the good work that they're doing we can have our seats and welcome your neighbor tell him Ora, you've made the right choice and tonight God is doing something new because he has prepared his servant he has yes there's a word for us tonight I welcome us to stand as you welcome Pastor James as you welcome Pastor James Anyanka to share the word with us tonight you're welcome thank you let's appreciate pastor sally god bless you so much and increase in you thank you so much great to see you all church it's a pleasure to be in the presence of the lord just to share his word to hear his voice to be corrected guided, counseled by his holy word, the holy scriptures. In this moment, I thank God for the grace to be here and to share because he has put a song in my heart, he has given me a new song this day. I appreciate our parents, Prophet Eric Odoi and Pastor Anna Odoyo, for this chance to be here and share with you the word of God. Praise be to the living God. And we've been studying on end time battles. Our key verse coming from the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. The word of God says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, who to the inhabitants of the earth, in the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. So this is the uh, key verse as we continue on this topic. And it's important to know that the devil, the evil one, has a short time. And he has great wrath, so that he can deceive so that he can kill, so that he can steal, so that he can destroy that which the Lord has made. For we know that only God can bless, only God can create. But the devil within the short time that he knows he has, he's also on the run to do as much destruction as possible. And our enemy... The devil uses one thing that is called fear. We are also reminded that he is the accuser of saints. And he is the deceiver of nations. And one of the things that the devil uses is fear. And as we go on, we want to get to know the difference between the fear or what fear is versus the song of victory. Because we are coming from victory as we fight our battles. But because the enemy knows that we have already won and this victory has been given to us by Christ Jesus, he puts in, in us fear and doubt so that we cannot perceive, so that we cannot tell our victory is at hand. So as we study through the end time battles, our concentration today is on fear versus the song of victory. Because every battle that the Lord has given you, he has given you a song of victory for that battle. Each one of them, there is a song of victory that the Lord has given you. And the best that we can do is to sing that song, rejoice before 
even going for that battle. All in that battle. Sing that song of victory. And our key text is Psalms 118. Psalms 118. The word of God says, we'll go verse by verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, his mercy endures forever. Verse 5. Let those who fear the Lord now say, his mercy endures forever. I call on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. We can pause there. We are reminded to give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And when we say that the Lord is good, it's because he will avail all things that are good for our battles. It is the Lord who is good that gives you the peace of mind for the battle. It's the Lord who is good that will equip you for the battle. It is the Lord who is good that will cover you when you are going to the battle. Because he is good and his mercies endures forever. And we are told that the Lord is faithful. Now, if he has promised you victory, God will never go against his word. And one character of God is that he is faithful. So as we fight our battles, as we go into the battleground, we know that beside us, there is one who is fighting and who is faithful to the end. Even if you give up, the Lord is not going to give up on you. Even if you give up on the victory, the Lord is not going to give up. He will deliver the victory to you. Even if you are going to give up on the team or those that you are with, the fellow ministers that you are supposed to accomplish a vision, the Lord is faithful and he's not going to let you down. And you are being told that give thanks to him. So one of the things in our song of victory as we go to the battle is give thanks to the Lord. And we're giving thanks to the Lord because he is good and he is faithful. So whichever battle that you are facing, whichever circumstance and situation you are, you are in tonight, and you have been in through this season, past, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And if you are in that battle, it means that he's giving you the strength to fight. It means that the previous seasons of that battle or situations, he has enabled you to be where you are. It might be getting hotter. It might be getting difficult. You might be losing hope. But the fact that tonight you can hear this word and that you are where you are at the moment, it means there is a reason for you to give thanks. For he is good, he is faithful, and he is going to grant you victory. And we read that his faithful love endures forever. Verse 4. That let those who fear the Lord say, His faithful love endures forever. So we say, give thanks to him. He is good and he is faithful. And this love, his love endures forever. And all of you know that whoever loves you will never allow you to lose. Is that true? Anyone who loves you will never allow you to lose. And you are being reminded in the scripture that 
You are the righteous, the faithful. Say it. That the Lord loves you. And his faithfulness endures forever. Now, if he loves you, he will never allow you to lose. From verse 4. He is faithful, love endures forever. Where there is love, there is no fear. Because our song is fear versus the song of victory. So where there is love, there is no fear. The devil will come with the fear so that you can forget your position. So that you cannot see the end of the battle. You cannot see yourself celebrating in victory because he has brought fear and doubt to you. But then God is stepping up with his love. In his love, his faithfulness. And we all agree that if he loves you, he will never let you lose. Anything you love, you will never let it get destroyed. You will protect it at all costs. Anything you love, you will watch over it the entire night. Mothers can attest when they have newborns. They won't sleep for longer seasons just to see if the child coughs they are there because that is something they love so dearly they will want to protect it at all cost and even animals who are not blessed the way we are their instinct allows them to protect the young ones because they love them so much and they will never allow any danger or anything they send destructive to be around the young ones because of the love they have for them. And that is the same love that God has for you. And you are better than the animal in the field because you bear his spirit. And you who is Russia's one, you who is fighting this war as the soldier of the Lord, he loves you and he will never allow you to lose because he loves you. The winners are those who fear him. And the Bible reminds that he will put them in a spacious place. Now, if you know when you are fighting, or if you ever have fought even when you are young, most moments, the, those cases that you lost, that person who won, we normally say, I could fix the situation, I'm a corner. So that you can't move like you are confined in a space. Even in war, if you see the movies or the battle that you have witnessed, they will come and surround you so that you are confined in a space. Even when the children of Israel were fighting, you'll hear King say that, let's take them in the valley so that we can win them over there. But the God of the valley is the same God of the mountains. So when you are confined in a space where you have limited options, it is easier for your enemy to win over you. But the Bible tells us what in verse 5? I call to the Lord in distress because you are where you cannot come out. The Lord answered me and put me in a spacious place. Now, when you are in a spacious place or somewhere free, it means your mind is open. It means you can perceive. It means you can see an exit plan. It means you can re-strategize. And that is what God is doing to you in this song of your victory. That yes, you are confined. You are under distress. The solution is call on him. And in every battle, you must call on the name of the Lord. Call on him. And when you call on him, he will put you in a spacious place. This means you will be able to strategize. This means you will be able to think or retrieve. There are times you might need to retrieve and then come back to win the battle. This means you can be able to ask for help because there is a way out. This means you can be able to breathe because God has put you in a special place. And this gives you a chance to win the battle.
Praise be to the name of the Lord. And the Bible also reminds us that when we are fighting our battles, we need help. And you need help from someone who can be trusted. Imagine sending for help and that person assumes. Imagine sending for help and that person diverts your message of, of help to something else. When we are fighting these battles, we also need help. And verse 7 reminds us that the Lord is with me. He is my helper. I will look in triumph on my enemy. So ask him. Tell him, Father, this is where I am. You promise by your word that you are always with me. You will never forsake me. You will never leave me. And in this moment of distress, as you have given me, as you have put me in a spacious place, I still ask for your help. And the Lord is your helper. Because in the battles, you need help. And you need help from someone who is faithful. You need help from someone that you know they will never let you down. You need help from someone who is trustworthy. Someone that you can take refuge in. Say you are retrieving and you need to hide before you strategize. Then that person should be able to be a refuge to you. Know that they will set you up or tell your enemy they are hiding in my sitting room. Imagine having such a helper. Someone who will set you up. Someone who will spill out your secrets. Someone you cannot confide in. But we are being reminded that the Lord is that one who is with us, who is the better helper. And it is better to take refuge in him than man. It is better to call on him for help than man. Because you cannot trust in man. But you can trust in the name of the Lord. So you need help from someone who can be trusted in battles. I know we have friends. We have relatives. We have people around us that we value. In these people, there are times that we have reached out to. And they have come in big. They have helped us. Maybe it, can, it has just been moments where you feel your budget does not meet and you need something so that you can acquire and they have been there. But tough times are coming or you are in a tough time already as you hear my voice this evening. And you really want help. You are in a battle and you really want help. Jehovah is the only trusted one that you can go into. And even if he's going to direct you to man, because the graces of God are with man, he only can give you the right choice. He only can direct you to the right person who is going to help you. And that person will not bring shame to you. Because there are battles that we fight, and some of them, if they are exposed, we will hide in shame. But you can confide in the Lord Jesus. He can lead you to a friend that you can confide in. Who will not let out your secrets in the battle. And who will help you win the battle. Ask your friend, can you be trusted in battles? They can tell you yes, and that is good. But we have a friend in Jesus who can always be trusted in battles and if they know Jesus then they should be trusted in the battles that the Lord Jesus has given us so that we win as a team we are all the body of Christ if we go to revelations we will come back to our key text Psalms 118 but I want us to capture something in revelations chapter 20 verse 3 and revelations chapter 20 verse 8 where we are being told that in Revelation 23, when the angel of God ties the devil, the, the word of God says, and threw him into the pit and shut it and sealed. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him. 
to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until a thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. Now, this is the devil. And you are being told that when Jesus comes the, and there is judgment, the devil is put in a pit, held there for a thousand years, so that he does not deceive nations anymore. Now, understand it. This is a creature whose main work, or the devil, the Satan, is to deceive nations. So just hold on that. To deceive nations. So for a thousand years, the saints shall reign with God. But the devil is locked up so that he does not deceive the nation. And then after a thousand years, he is released. We are told when the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison. Verse 8. And will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. In number, they are like a sand of the seashore. Now, I asked myself, why the devil should just, his main concentration is to deceive nations. We are also told that he is the accuser of saints. You and me who know Christ, you who are in Christ, our accuser is the devil. And the children of God, he who accuses them is the devil. However, he has a major plan, like the big plan, the, the A plan, to deceive nations. So why nations? Why countries? Why nations? It's because nations are the bigger society. And nations have machinery. If Kenya wanted to achieve something against an individual or a people, then it will be able to. We know how nations treat protesters. We've seen people who protest on the streets. The nations are able to release their machinery against them because they have the power, the authority. The nations also have the power to impose rules. And it is easy to corrupt those in position at the national level because the entire nation will be corrupted. It is also easy for nations to destroy small groups, individuals, and even the church, the body of Christ. It is easy for a nation to impose rules to make sure that people cannot worship freely. Nations can easily do that because they have constitution policies. And another thing is, nations have structures, or what we call institutions, that can last for decades or centuries. And that's why you'll be told that this constitution of this nation has been there for 200 years or 300 years or 50 years, because that constitution as a formal cause can withstand, can last is an institution that will last for some time. So that's why the devil is targeting to deceive nations because the greater effect will be great upon the people of the Lord. We also know that nations are able to implement policies and these policies can restrain how the gospel can be shared. These policies can withhold people from fellowship from free worship and restrain how the gospel can go around villages, streets, and cities. Because nations have this capacity. And that's why the enemy, the devil, the Satan, he has a bigger plan on nations to deceive them. And he's using what we've just mentioned to deceive them. Maybe you can ask why? Because nations are in places where government can implement policies. And maybe we need to understand what a policy is so that we can know the extent at which the devil is a schema to seduce or deceive nations for us to lose these battles. A policy is a law or a regulation, a procedure, administrative action, an incentive, or a voluntary practice of government and other institutions. 
We remember during the COVID season, we were like, we have to keep the distance 1.5 meters from your neighbor. You need to wash your hands. If you have to sneeze, then you need to hold your hand or your arm above your nose and you need to cover your face with a mask. That is a policy because it was restraining us from what was happening during time. So now such a thing can be implemented. There are nations that are implementing policies around morality. These are not things that have been there, but as we, they say that we evolve, they say that uh, as we change, as times change, there are things that need to change. And there are nations that are putting and implementing policies around morality, around identities of people, men and women of God, around the family structure. These are policies that are being set in place. Then you'll understand why the devil, his a plan is nations to deceive them. Because once a nation agrees, this is the way of life. Remember, we are reminded in the scripture that the power of sin is in law. However, also, the Old Testament or the law helped us open our eyes to know what is wrong and what is right. Because sin is lawlessness. Now, because of the law, we know what is wrong, what is right. Our eyes have been opened because we have been told this is not what we are supposed to do. Now, if policies come to accept what the law had said, this is wrong, it means people will live without a conviction, this is wrong. It will, lead, it will need more grace and praise be to the name of the Lord because there will always be the grace of the Lord and the revelation of the word will always be upon the men of God and the women of God to know what is wrong. But the challenge is those that are young, those who do not know, growing up knowing that, okay, I can steal and still be right because the government has allowed it. I can take my neighbor's property without asking them because it is right and there is a policy that has allowed it. Or I can get out of marry a fellow man because the government has allowed it. So you can't tell me it's wrong. Now you understand why the government, why the devil's main a plan is nations. Because the nations have that authority to be able to influence what will happen even to a single individual. However, we are being told that all these battles, you can win them in the name of the Lord, Yahweh. So there is still victory guaranteed. Despite the devil's plan to deceive nation, there is still victory guaranteed. And in the name of the Lord, we still have, we've been granted victory to overcome all this evil that is around us. If we go back to our main text in Psalms 118. Verse 10 says, All the nations surrounded me. Now remember, we've just learned that the devil's main agenda is to deceive the nations. And once the nations are deceived, the nations can go even against the saints of the Lord. The nations can go against the plan of the church. The nations can go against those who worship God. And that's why it's written here, all the nations surrounded me. In the name of Yahweh, I destroyed them. Now, despite these nations coming together, having their own plans, their policies, having what they see that will destroy the humankind, the nature of God, and what God has planned, we are being given that in our song of victory, not fear, in our song of victory, we can still win in the name of the Lord. So it's only in the name of the Lord Jesus that we can win our battles. Because nations shall gather against us. Nations shall gather against the will of God. Nations shall be deceived. They don't know, but they will be deceived to be destructive. But in the name of the Lord, there is victory. In the name of the Lord, God is giving us victory. Verse 12, they surrounded me like bees. They were extinguished like Fire, like a fire among thorns. In the, name of the, in the name of Yahweh, I destroyed them. You pushed me hard 
to make me fall, but the Lord helped me. Now, here is where we also see the grace of God in our battles. Remember what, when governments are deceived, what they can do. And here, it's like, I was pushed back, about to fall. And these are the things that nations shall allow. So that our children, when they grow up, they don't know the truth. They don't know what is wrong, what is right. Because nations have allowed profanity. Nations have allowed immorality. Nations have allowed adultery. And constitutions have been stamped, promulgated. And those things are right within the law of the land. So our children are pushed. Even though they are craving for God, they are pushed to fall. They are pushed into sin. They are pushed into these endless battles. But what are the scripture reminders in our song of victory? In verse 13, I was pushed back about to fall. So you will be there on the edge of the cliff. Oh Lord, like how is this allowed? Am I also to be a victim of this? The society is pushing you and telling you that this is right. And it's a battle that you need to win. And you will be pushed back on the cliff. This, but the Bible say, but. Can you just say, but? But. But the Lord helped me. So those moments will come. But the Lord will help you. You will be at the edge of losing that battle. Because the nations have been deceived. And everyone else is agreeing to the ways of the evil. But the Lord shall help you. Because he is the helper. And he will never let you down. And when you call on him in that moment of distress. But the Lord will help you. The Lord will help me. The Lord will help you. And you will be granted that victory. The Lord is my strength, verse 14. And my song. He has become my salvation there there are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of Russia. and remember that's why we're saying that this is the song we are in a battle but this is the song we don't have fear because you have been given a song every morning god has given a new song to us because he have given us victory in our battles and in our tents there shall be joy of victory the Lord's right hand performs valiantly. The Lord's right hand is raised. The Lord's right hand performs valiantly. I will not die, but I will live and proclaim what the Lord has done. Now this is also key because in these battles you will be pressed. In these battles they will come for you. They will come for the life out of you. Because the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And in these battles, their aim is that you die. And that's why they even target our young ones to die in sin. And that's why nations have been deceived. So that the young people can die in sin. So that they can live in profanity. They can live in things that does not glorify God to die in sin. But God, because the Bible tells us that. But I will live and proclaim what the Lord has done. Now, despite these battles, despite the nations being deceived, despite the sin that you see around and what you need to fight and win, but God will make sure that you live. That is verse 17. I will not die. Tell your neighbor, I will not die. But I will live and proclaim what the Lord has done. So your battle is a testimony. You need to know that. That battle is a testimony. Because it does, it's, it's not going to leave you down. It, it's not going to leave you crippled. It's not going to leave you dead. People are not coming at your funeral. People are not coming to see your shop closed. People are not coming to see you abandon school. People are not coming to see you battle your marriage and walk out they are not going to say you fail but the Lord will make sure that you live but the Lord will make sure that you testify but the Lord will make sure that you stand firm on your feet you remain standing and proclaim the gospel of the Lord you will not die 
you will live to testify. So rejoice that there is, you are in that battle. Rejoice. And that's why we started that. Give thanks because they will see the Lord in you. Give thanks because they will glorify the Lord in you. Be grateful. Give thanks that that battle is there. You will not die. You will live. It's a testimony. So embrace it. Embrace it. And go in it. Let the glory of God be fulfilled. Let the Jehovah manifest in you. Overcome in Jesus' mighty name. Verse 18 says, The Lord disciplined me severely. A very good thing. That did not give me over to death. I don't know how many buts we've mentioned, but again, look at this. The Lord has chastened me severely. So in that battle, give thanks. When you are kind, give thanks. When you are chastened, give thanks. When you lose, give thanks. When you do not win, maybe the first time, give thanks. When you are losing, give thanks. As long as you are in the same battle, it's not over. When you are punished in it, give thanks. Because God chastens those that he loves. And we say that he who loves you will never let you lose. He will never let you lose because he loves you. He will never let you be defeated because he loves you. And in that, he will chasten you. In that, he will bring things to make sure that your eyes are open. So you also have to embrace this. When the troubles come, when you feel disappointed, when you feel that, Father, this is not... This shouldn't be me. Who else? Let it happen to you. Let it happen to you. You can't say this should not come to me. Rejoice in that state. As long as you are in that battle, he is with you. He loves you. He will chasten you, not once and not softly, severely. I know we learned of take la kuku halimumizim wanawe, right? Yeah, you ni kuku. God's not kuku. He is going to chasten you severely. Severely. And it says that he has not given me over to death. So even in that pain, you're rejoicing in life. Even in that pain, you're still rejoicing. Even in that lack, you're still rejoicing. But he has not given you over to death. So impress it. Love him. Rejoice and give thanks to him. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Verse 19. Open the gates of righteousness for me. I will enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. Still, just give thanks. You who are righteous, you are blessed with God. Just give thanks. For he has opened the gates for you. Imagine. Okay, there are gates. I know our church has two gates. You can either come from gate A or gate B. And the gates can be open. But you are talking of gates of righteousness. Imagine walking through them. Not any other gates. He has given you, he has opened. And he's like, enter with thanks. Kuja ingia ukisherekea. Na utukufu kwa mdome yako. Ingia na asanti kwa kinywa chako. And that's what we are saying that we are not a people of fear in our battles. But this is our song. We will sing. Every morning, a new song that Jesus has given us in our battles. Verse 21. I will give thanks to you because you've answered me. Remember he said, ask for help and he will answer. And he has answered you and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected have become the cornerstone. This came from the Lord. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Every moment of your battle is the day that the Lord has, been, has made. Rejoice. Be glad in it. Tell him, Father, here I am. I know. Today, yesterday I didn't do this. This can be my punishment. But I give thanks to you. I rejoice in this situation. Every single moment is the moment that the, the Lord has made. And be glad in it. Rejoice. Don't ask why. Don't complain. Don't whine. It's a battle that you must win and he's there with you. Praise be to the name of the Lord. 
verse 25. Lord, save us. Lord, please grant us success. Still in our song, tell him. Because he's our father. He's our friend. We can confide with him. Tell him when you're asking for help, Father, save me. Father, grant me success. And it will be a prayer that we'll also be praying now. And however, be praying it that just grant me success. It's a battle and I know you want it. But just grant me success to rejoice. Verse 26, he who comes in the name of the Lord is blessed. For the Lord, for the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God and has given us light. Now this is also what we need to concentrate on. The Lord is God and has given us light. Bind the festival sacrifice with cords to the thorns of the altar. So verse 27, part 1. The Lord is God and has given us light. If you have ever maybe watched war movies or people going in battle, you may think or some of them, they will tell you that their greatest enemy during the night is not the person they went to fight, but is darkness. Darkness is the greatest enemy. Giza, like what we see here. If not here, but outside, because our church is well lit. What you can see outside, or when you go to walk in the streets, and you can't find, the streets are not, they do not have light. So the greatest enemy is darkness. And the devil is an agent of darkness. Is an agent of the night. When soldiers go to war, now physical, those who fight, remember our battles are not physical, but spiritual. But when soldiers in another country go to war, most of the army who need to trail the land, one of their greatest enemy, apart from their opponent, is darkness. Because there's nothing you can do in darkness. You can't move. And if by any chance you light something, for you will expose your position. The enemy will be able to tell where you are. So darkness becomes their greatest enemy. And verse 27 reminds us that the Lord is God and has given us light. When the moderator for the service was leading us to prayer, he said that Christ Jesus is our light. And we pray that the light of the Lord shall be upon our homes, our families, our nations, our children. So in our battles, let there be light. And that light is Christ Jesus. Let Christ Jesus be the light. Let him give us the light in our battles. So you can't fight in darkness. You can't. The darkness is the place of the enemy. So you can't go there. You can't use their tools to fight them. You need yours. You need the light. You need Christ Jesus to fight the enemy. And Christ Jesus is the light. So let there be light in your situation. And embrace the light of God in your battle. Let him come and shine his light in the darkest of secrets that the enemy is exposed. In Jesus' mighty name. Verse 28, you are my God and I will give you thanks. You are my God, I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let's stand up and just go before God and tell him thank you for this moment. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Father. Oh, Jehovah, who is like you, Master? Our light, oh God. In all these situations, oh King of glory, you've walked with us. Father, we surrender to you. You are the one who gives us victory. You are the one who watches over us. You are the one, O King of glory, that we bless, O oh God. And we bless your holy name. We rejoice this moment. We rejoice because of this day. The day that you have made, O oh King of glory. And we are glad in it, knowing that you are our song. And you have given us a song. Fear is not our portion. We are walking in the light. We are walking in the fulfillment of your word. And you've loved us, Father. You've cared for us, Almighty Father. Even as the nations are deceived, O King of glory, the saints shall be strong. The saints shall walk in the light, Father. Even when the moments we are pushed back, Almighty Father, for us to fall, but Lord, you are there to hold our hand, to give us victory, to strengthen us.
We love you, Lord, and we glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name, we do believe and pray. Amen. I will welcome Pastor Sally, Pastor Maureen, sorry, to come and wind up our session. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Celebrate the Lord. What a powerful message this evening. Celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son, give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy He's given Jesus Christ. He's and now, and now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, of what the Lord has done for us. And now, and now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor, let the poor say, give you thanks. We give you thanks, oh God. Lord, we give you thanks, oh God. We give you thanks for every battle in our lives, oh God, because you have won them for us. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, that at the mention of his name, that every knee bows down and every tongue confesses that he is Lord and that Lord you remind us this evening that the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous run into it and they are saved thank you Jesus because tonight we are saved oh God thank you that we came with our hearts troubled oh God we came confused in this place but lord you have given us a solution tonight oh god thank you for taking away our burdens oh god thank you lord for teaching us to fight oh god that we will call on the name of jesus the name that is above every other name thank you jesus battle the battle belongs to you lord we bless your name and we honor you thank you jesus Blessed be your name, O oh God. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor, for speaking.
to us this evening. Thank you for allowing the Lord to use you. We have heard the word. And we live by it. Amen. Let's celebrate the Lord once again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for allowing us to be here today, dear Lord. We honor your name and we glorify your name. Thank you very much. Uh, even for tuning in today. And those that are in the sanctuary, thank you for coming to fellowship with us this evening. We really appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are a blessing to this ministry. May the Lord bless you. I want to bring to our attention that uh, on Saturday the 20th, we have a couple's breakfast beginning from 6.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Kindly, if you're married, you can register with us. You can uh, just uh, talk to us on our platforms, either on Facebook, on uh, whichever platform you connect with us. You can just uh, uh, talk to us and we will guide you on what to do. But we will be here from 6.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. And the Lord God will bless you. The charges are 350 bob per head. Amen. Amen. And reminding us that we have our um, CBD fellowship on 27th. That will be Saturday next week uh, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. You are all invited. If you're watching us online, we invite you. If you can physically find your way to Nairobi Cinema on 27th, we welcome you. And the Lord God will bless you. We continue to remind you of our project, uh, buying, uh, the, uh, repairing our tents. We continue to remind you to give. You can give as much as the Lord will bless you. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Allow me to pray as we live this evening in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for your word. We walk out with our hearts and our souls blessed. Thank you for speaking to us. We walk by faith, O oh God. We walk, O oh God, singing the songs of praise to you, O oh Lord, because you have done it for us this evening. May you bless us. May you bless our viewers in Jesus' name. We declare that our water is blessed, our food is blessed, our going in and our coming out is blessed, O oh God, and that, Lord, you are in control of our lives. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Let's meet again on Friday at 5 a.m. East African time as we pray for the nation. The Lord God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.